house, which is a house of actually 30 something girls um, that come live and visit in the house. So feeding a massive family is a huge task. So people always ask me, Mariam, how do you do it? Now, people ask me that about work, um, and actually a lot more people ask me that about living. So I thought I wanted to bring you into my kitchen to show you how I run a family of 30 girls. So today I'm making, or I made, um, steak and chimichurri. Yes, so steak, quickly just put it on the grill, 10 minutes depending on how you like it. I'm very much a medium, um, medium kind of girl. And I've got some basil here with some peppercorn. Just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there. Actually, let me just do this. Basil already in there. Gonna add a bit more in there and a little bit of olive oil. Just need a tablespoon, just a drop, and some peppercorn. Don't need too long. And this is just the flavor. And we're just gonna dress this. We have loads of big meals in the house all the time. And I think for us, that's just kind of a way, you know, you could just imagine what it's like living with so many girls. It's a way that brings us together. And for me, there is no better time than, you know, having food with your family, talking, discussing about what's next over food. Gonna dress this a little bit here. I don't know if you're into dips, but I like everything with crisp. Really strange. Again, being a mum, crisps is everything. So these are some truffle fries. Have them on the side with hummus. And well, these are really good. You can see they're handmade, not by me. It's a bit of a cheat but they're really good, handmade from a local greengrocer's. And there's chili sauce, and these are things, just little light snacks that kind of get the family together. Probably 30 minutes take time, but I'll put the recipe at the bottom so you guys can have a look, have a try, and let me know how it goes for you and yours. Our go-to meal at the Love House is tacos. We love Mexican food, it's fast, it's fun and it's really filling and tasty. And you can feed a lot of mincemeat, it's really cheap and you can feed a lot of people with it. But I've had this wok, I think, forever, I think you can tell. And the girls want me to let go of it, but I won't, all right, because it does the job. The worst thing about cooking is not having the right instrument. So of course, I'm cleaning the pot, but it gets rusty sometimes. So how I kind of get the rust out is just a little bit of olive oil or any oil and it kind of, you know, gets the rust out. But I think the rust makes the food a little bit nicer. I use olive oil to fry everything. Um, so just a teaspoon or two on there. I'm not massive on measuring. I wasn't brought up with like all the measuring stuff. So I actually cook with my eyes, which is a terrible way of showing you guys how to make something. So I literally cook with my eyes to see what's great. My bases are always onion and garlic on everything. Wait for the pan to get a little bit hot. And wait for it to sizzle. Once it's started to sizzle, then you can use whatever seasoning you like. Some of my bases are all purpose. Naturally, Maggie cube is everything, and I always use fresh cracked pepper. So you can see it's beginning to pick up some heat now. This is something I normally make on the Tuesday. So we have loads of people come around to work on the Tuesday, and the house becomes almost like a working hub. So there are loads of mouths to feed and it's almost like what do we do when we're tired of like dominoes and things like that. So, so you can see it's beginning to pick up a little bit of heat. And some crushed garlic. The time, what I normally do is I typically crush loads of garlic, have it on the side, put it in the fridge and it's lost time and you might be thinking oh my god this is a lot of garlic I'm about to season a lot of meat <laughs> so you don't need your your onions and your garlic to go really soft it can go soft the pan I can see that there isn't enough oil in the pan so I'm just going to add a little bit more 
again, just with my eyes. Mincer tends to bring out a lot of oil anyway. And just with your hands, you don't need to be afraid of the meat, it works, it's good. And a wok like this is good because nothing gets stuck at the bottom of the pan. It means no whiskey. I'm a bit of a messy cook because I cook big. And you just want this to get some colour. So I'm going to bring you into the pan right now to show you how it begins to brown. It's still catching colour right now. This can take about 10 minutes and you're just mixing, constantly mixing. Notice there's no seasoning, there's no salt, there's nothing in this at the moment. I'm just getting it brown. The reason why I've chose not to season it now is because once you season it, it begins to take colour and you can actually confuse your colouring to that the food isn't actually cooked well. So I just wanted to catch its own natural colour, no salt, no pepper, nothing. We're just going to brown the meat. So you can see now that it's beginning to come to a little bit of a boil and you've got to keep stirring it, otherwise it will get clumpy like this. But now I think I'm safe to put some seasoning in. So firstly, I'm going to go with the tomato puree. This is just for colour and it actually does get really good taste. I use this for any red kind of meat sauces that I'm making just for a base. Your, for two packets of minced beef, you can put two, you can put one tube actually. Two tubes will make it a bit too red, but one tube is fine. And you can see it's getting a beautiful colour now. It looks really boring, admittedly right now, it looks really boring. And this would give you about six Maggie cubes for taste. And you can see how much it shrinks. This would probably feed six people. So it's shrinking, but you can see the flavors are going in now. And this is some more purpose. I'm going to bring you into the camera a little bit more for you to see how it's beginning to transform and the colour is picking up so beautifully. Now when it begins to do this, what I tend to do is I tend to add a little bit more garlic just to make it fresh. Now, look, I don't make my own pasta sauce, right? One regular pasta sauce from the stores, any works with tacos. You need about two jars. The more sauce you have, it's almost like it reproduces more meat. If you're cooking for a big family, this is a cheat. Okay. And within eight minutes, voila, you have taco sauce. So I'm just gonna reduce the heat whilst I go and prepare some salsa and guacamole. A bit of salt and pepper. We're gonna take these over actually. We're gonna take these over here. Now, avocado is probably one of my favorite vegetables. Really, really, really mushy. My daughter actually likes to get her hands in it and crush it herself, so it's really good to do this on a weekend when she's not in school. Look, in here there is about eight avocados. I remember growing up, avocado was so cheap, you know, but now it's become like this, or it's been this like health food of the decade or the last how many years, and now it's like the most expensive thing in the aisles. This used to be like 50p, but all you've got to do is just keep mashing it. Don't be afraid of the colour, I know it goes a bit brown. 
so don't be afraid of it. And the more avocado you have, the better. You can just put this in the fridge for the next day. You can have it on toast, so don't be afraid of it at all. So we're gonna just squeeze a bit of lime in there. Be careful of the seeds, you can typically grab them. One lime is enough. One whole lime is enough. That will give it a bit more moisture. Now, I love red onions. So, I would typically use a whole red onion, but I know that not everybody at home likes red onions. So I'll put half into it, but if I was making some tacos for myself, I'll put a whole red onion in. And for colour, chopped tomatoes. This is a great way to have your kids and get your children into eating vegetables. You can see there's about six avocados in here, but it looks like probably just one. And if you, if you involve everybody in cooking, Nobody can complain or say they don't like this, it's new, it's boring, why are we having this for dinner now? And again, salt and pepper. And this you can literally put what you like. Try this out. Oh, that's good. I think it needs a little bit more, a little bit more salt. And it's perfect. And this can just be served as it, as it is, with some tacos. You can even use taco shells. Mm. It's perfect. I'll put these inside for myself later. So now the mint is actually ready. And it's ready to serve and ready to dish. So I'm gonna leave this Keep it here on the side so it stays warm whilst I warm up some taco shells. Now, we have this massive argument in the house. How do you like your taco shells? Do you like hard shells or do you like soft shells? Right now, soft shells are winning. So, just a little bit of oil. and warm some shells and then we're going to begin to fill them which is the most important part. Once this gets warm give it about 60 seconds or so then you move them across put some avocado in it you can put chicken on it you can put absolutely anything you know to fill this and again it's quick um, it's tasty and it's good. These should be fine now. Let's begin to warm out. and for time, we're just gonna put two in there at the same time, or even three. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. So whilst that warms up, if you don't have grated cheese already, grate some. Um, you can use any cheese you like. Um, cheddar cheese, matured cheddar cheese. You know, I'm really for whatever is in the kitchen. So tacos are great because you can literally use any leftover meat you have. It doesn't have to be minced meat. It could be even meat from stew from the night before and you begin to pull it apart. Chicken from the night before you begin to pull it apart and you can begin to fill your shells. So this is warming up quite nicely but just be careful that it doesn't burn. Really quickly, and again, this, ooh, it's hot. I'm going to be closer to the pan to see. Taking up beautifully. 
just make sure it cooks well all through and it's perfect and I'm going to show you these a little bit later Ready now time to dress them, literally fill them with whatever you want. These are just some baby gem lettuce, ready cleaned and washed, and you can literally fill them with that. So I'm just gonna put a baby gem in each taco, just giving as many greens as I can, where I can. <laughs> just hide them in there, you know. Really good, really fresh. And now um, for some of that lovely mints that we made earlier. So again, if you have a vegan at home, you can put tofu. And if you have somebody who doesn't eat red meat, you can literally put anything. You can put salmon in these. You can put chicken in it. It can be anything. So we're just filling these up again. Nice. Filling the tacos. Again, it's a really messy job. Making sure that everybody gets the element. Stuffing it really nicely. And you can still hear my chicken sizzling. Okay, so now that we've got our tacos filled here, we're going to put some black on everything. If you like spice, you can put some chilies in your black. And I know. I don't know really likes raw chilies like I do, and you're literally stuffing them. This is a really messy thing. Like this. How beautiful is this? And it's amazing. And now for the cheese. And you can get, if you're lactose like me, you can get dairy free cheese. This is, this is delicious. Oh my goodness, that. I actually can't, cannot wait. Now, just because I want to make it a little bit interesting, I'm going to put these in my oven. I don't want it over melted. I still want it to, you know, I still want to see. But you know what? Let's just go for it. I think this is enough. And it's a really hot plate. Let's see how beautiful it is. So, family time is everything to me. I'm having all the daughters, especially on Tuesday, after they've had really. Master, so how was school today? Um, quite interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> today at school. Um, I'm acting different now that there's boys here, and of course, like it's normal. Oh, the boys cute. Is that why? Like, what's happening? Do you know that? You know the boy groups. Like, so she's the person that I know here that actually goes to the gym on a regular basis. <laughs> huh? See, I knew it. I knew it. Bring your plate. Come on, come on, I want a steak. But you know what it is? This thing. That gym one. I think. I don't know. I think it's personal. You know what? This is the most exciting thing for me. It's the best thing. I think. You know how much food brings people together. Is probably you know the most exciting thing being able to just come around every day after school and just talk about what's happening, what's happening in school, what's happening outside of school, what's happening at work, what's happening with clients, what's happening at home. And I think this is the best place where we kind of like dish out any issues that we may have, like the issue I had with her for not getting the food ready today. Um, but it's all good. Um, it's just a, it's such an amazing place for everybody to kind of be themselves, and I'm so grateful that. You know, um, food can bring our families together the way it does. What brings your family together? I think you should find that thing and, you know, work on that, st strengthen it in, in 
don't let it go. It may not work for other people, it may not work for other families, but if it works for your family, stay with it. So coming together and cooking together um, and talking. Talking really brings us together. And I think, you know, transparency, which I'm really huge on, um, has really helped, you know, this house for a number of years. So I hope that you got some inspiration for your own home. See you soon.